Hey everyone, I'm TH Pine and welcome to Factory Idle. What is Factory Idle you ask? I like to call it a production line optimization idle game. It's available for free in your browser and this is what it looks like. So it's an idle game, but don't turn off the video yet because it's probably the most interesting idle game you've ever seen. It's actually pretty complicated and you have to use your brain to actually play it, pr play it properly. So what is it all about? Well, you build a factory by placing various factory parts and uh, connecting with them with conveyor belts and those factory parts will consume and produce resources resources and you will uh, your goal is to produce more uh, advanced resources um, and sell them for a profit and this will allow you to build research buildings which then will generate research points which then will allow you to research more advanced technologies which will unlock factory parts which will use and produce more advanced resources and that's the circle of life in an idle game right so you make money to make more money so this is my current safe game, my current build of a factory. It's not super efficient, but it's fairly advanced in the game already. Well, not super late game, but it, like it, I played this for a, a few days. So um, this is not a start of game. And, and to not completely overwhelm you, I will load a different save file really quick. So we go over to the settings and load the second slot where I prepared an empty factory. So um, when you start a game, you only have this part of the factory unlocked. You have to buy the rest. So you can see, I don't didn't I don't have those two unlocked yet in this save file, but I have all the others. So when you start, you only have this limited space over here, and you start um, with only iron. You don't have any other resources. So what do you do? You build an iron ore buyer. The iron ore buyer is a building or a factory part which will produce iron ore over time. Most buildings um, work at a ten ticks interval. So uh, one second consists of multiple ticks depending on your upgrades I think it starts with four ticks per second and you can upgrade this right now I'm at at eight ticks per second so this will roughly produce eight iron ore every second or so a little a little um, less than that because every ten ticks and not every eight sec eight ticks but like let's just talk about ticks because that's easier so eight iron ore per ten ticks that's not um, the rate you get when you actually start again because this iron uh, buyer iron ore buyer is actually upgraded already as well so when you start I think it only produces two or four iron ore um, per 10 ticks I'm not quite sure um, however what do you do with the iron ore well you send it to an iron foundry which is a different factory part and as you can see this is a part which actually consumes eight iron ore and produces four iron ore every 10 ticks so this can take all the iron ore from the iron buyer by connecting them with the conveyor belt there we go and now the iron ore will go over there and into the iron foundry and what do we do with the iron? Well, we sell it to an iron seller, which is a different factory part, which will sell eight iron or uh, eight iron for thirty bucks every ten ticks. So we can connect this. And oops, that, that's not not a nice conveyor belt. Let's build con nice conveyor belts. Um, and uh, now we make a profit. Great. So um, that's how you make money in this game. This is a very simple case, um, but it gets more complex than this. First of all. You can take a look at the iron um, cell on and see that the efficiency is at 40%. It's actually at 50%, but it's not um, not um, like it's it's paneling between 60 and 40 because how the game actually calculates efficiency is a little weird. It should be over like longer intervals, I believe, but it's a fairly short time interval, so it will actually fluctuate between 40 and 60. But on average, it's 50. Why is that? Well, it can sell up to eight iron per 10 ticks. However, it's only su getting supplied with four iron every 10 ticks by the iron foundry. So what can we do? Well, we build a second iron foundry, which means we need a second iron buyer, iron ore buyer to be precise. And we connect those as well. And uh, now our iron seller will get more iron and can sell more iron per 10 ticks and will eventually run at 100% efficiency. Um, that's the plan at least. at least. Let's see if it works out. It should though. If I didn't do anything terribly wrong. There we go. 100% efficiency. And uh, we make three ticks, uh, three dollars per tick because that's what the iron seller says, right? Th 30 bucks every 10 ticks. So that's three bucks every tick. There we go. Okay, that's the basic basic way of playing the game. This is only the starting resource though. though. If we go to iron, it gets a little bit more complicated because if we take a look at the, st uh, not iron, to steel, sorry. If we take a look at the steel foundry, there's a nice diagram over here. I can not mouse edit and mouse over the thing because it will only show up when I mouse over the building. Um, so just look where I pointed with the mouse a few seconds ago. Um, there's a little, nice little diagram which shows that um, it actually requires two iron foundries and one coal buyer to be supplied perfectly. You can also just get the same information from the text. It uses four iron and four coal to produce one steel every 10 ticks. And if you now take a look at the other buildings, you can calculate how many of them you need. Actually, we need two um, iron 
sell uh, iron foundries for two steel foundries there we go and only one coal buyer to supply both of them um, but it's a little easier to get those information by looking at that diagram or that tree um, so let's let's try to do that shall we okay so we want a steel foundry let's sell the iron um, seller because we want to produce steel with our iron foundries so we supply the steel actually we need two steel um, foundries because that's what the diagram says there we go so okay so let's supply the two steel foundries with steel shall we you sell by right clicking and if you sell a factory part you will get all the money back you paid for building it so um yeah that's not a big deal you can experiment and completely rebuild your layout and everything if you want to you will not lose any money that's not true for upgrades and research later, but, uh, which I will show you later, but um, it's true for building and selling factory parts. So, okay, what is missing? Well, we're missing coal, so let's build a coal buyer. Uh, let's put it let's put it here. It's not, not super nice, but it's a little clustered. It, well, it's good to cluster in this game because you want to be space efficient. So we can split conveyor belts, or we could do two conveyor belts, like, let's demonstrate. So you could either, what we did there, is have one conveyor and split it into two directions, and it will split the resources or you can go for two conveyors and it will split um, the resources on those two outputs as well okay um, so this is how this works and now we have uh, two steel foundries producing steel however we have to sell the steel so we need a steel seller if we take a look at the steel seller for one steel seller we need st two steel foundries perfect because we have to so let's put it over here and connect it to the steel foundries there we go and um, there we go and now we will make a good amount of money well for start <laughs> when you start a game this is a good amount of money uh at the game at the state of the game where i am this is actually like this is nothing <laughs> um, as you can see here i have 50 million uh 50 billions in 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 my bank so getting 20 bucks um a tick is not like a lot <laughs> um so yeah but anyway if you start the game and get your first steel seller you're actually quite happy that you make a decent amount of money because it's way more than you would make um with the uh, with the iron seller so having steel is good at the beginning you also notice that the steel buildings um the steel foundry the coal buyer and the steel seller all have supply costs it says costs um 80 0.85 uh, dollars per tick for steel seller it's i think it starts with one but i upgraded so it's cheaper and uh, this steel foundry will actually cost 3.4 um, bucks per tick so those buildings will actually um well lose your money if you don't use them so just having them lying around is not a good idea uh, so you want to get them to use and if you want to optimize things you want to get them to use at 100 percent efficiency so that's usually the goal of the game you have to think about multiple like multiple things you have to think about uh, money efficiency you have to think about space efficiency and you actually have to somehow balance in research in there as well later on as well so this is a steel i will not completely build but show you a little bit of how plastic works so for plastic um, you need a plastic maker and if you take a look at a diagram you see that you need a oil buyer a coal buyer and a gas buyer to get the plastic running and then you can um then you can buy a, a plastic seller and get the resource in there all those ratios by the way it, this is important um all those ratios depend on the on the number of upgrades you have for those buildings so if you start out it's like the moment you unlock you you research plastic and you unlock the plastic buildings this will you this diagram will look differently because the ratios of your buildings are differently because none of them are upgraded because you just unlock them so i think you start with uh, one iron maker um four uh, needs like to supply an iron maker you need four uh, oil buyers and two coal buyers and one or two gas buyers i believe if i remember correctly and um, i upgraded in a way that i need one of each though which is um, way easier to design however i completely screwed that in my current save game actually but <laughs> that's a different point so this is how you make plastic it's a little bit more complex because you need three different resources but if you go to electronics it gets a little bit more crazy than this because electronics needs actually plastic so we have to actually create plastic which is pretty complex already and then we have to add silicon in there as well as um, on top of that so we need silicon and plastic and then we can sell the electronics to an electronic seller it's always the same idea however if you um, unlock more technologies later on i think the next one will be gun parts and later you will get to engines and tanks and stuff like that so you get more advanced technology later on which will sell for more money and make you a bigger profit Okay, so this is about buildings, uh, about money. There's um, another thing. Um, 
Let's talk about garbage first and then research. Okay, so uh, usually when you start out with plastic, um, the plastic maker will not only produce plastic, it will also produce waste, which is a resource you can't use. And you have to get rid of it because if you don't get rid of it, you will block or uh, you will clock up your conveyor belts, which will stop your production. This is actually a really important topic in this game. You want to, like you have, it's not okay to produce resources at, uh, at wrong ratios because um, stuff like that will happen here. I produce a lot of silicon, but the electronics maker is not actually using it up. It will, it's not consuming it. So the stock of the electronics maker gets full of silicon. You can see 40 out of 40 there. And that will stop the, the silicon of going in, in there and will clock up the conveyor belt, which will eventually clock up the silicon buyer and make, will it make it stop producing. And as long it's, as it's only one resource going in here, this is not too big of a deal. But as soon as you mix multiple resources on one conveyor belt, this gets really, really dangerous because it will actually stop your production because one resource cannot reach the, the building or the part you, it is, um, uh, you want it to be because the other resource is actually clocking up the conveyor belt and, well, you have, a, you have a deadlock at that moment and production will stop, which is obviously not what you want because then you don't make money. Uh, so you can't progress. Makes sense, right. Okay, so waste is a problem because waste will, you have to put the waste somewhere and you cannot just like lay, leave it lying around or collect it in the plastic maker or something because it will clog up everything. So that's not a thing you can do. So what do you do with the waste? Well, I will not demonstrate on the plastic maker, but I will demonstrate in a, on the electronics maker. But let's switch to my other build for that really quick because you can actually see it in action there. So let's uh, load um, slot one. There we go. Okay. Um, you can see my electronic maker. Let's let's take this one. Okay. This electronic maker is producing three electronics and three waste every 10 ticks. So what do I do? Well, I output the electronics and the waste and it will go like they will come out um, alternating. So electronic, waste, electronic, waste, electronic, waste, and then it starts over again after 10 ticks. So what I do is I split up the conveyor and put half of the items in the electronic cellar and the other parts in the garbage part, which is just in a building or a factory part, which will just destroy and discard items. Whatever you put in there, you can, you, uh, can put in there other things than waste, but waste is the most useful to put in there. But sometimes you want to get rid of other resources as well if your buildings are not set up in a way that you can actually fulfill the, the ratios you need. So um, yeah, this is the way to handle the waste, for example, and that's the use of, of, of garbage. One really important topic in this game is how conveyors work, because there are multiple important things about it. First of all, how is conveyor splitting work? So when I build a, um, like a, a split, like let's say, um, okay, we let, let's say we have an electronic maker here, and we build a conveyor down here to the electronic seller, Oh, let's say we put the electronic cell over here. Okay, now we built a conveyor here, and now we say, okay, let's let's put um, let's put the garbage here and split the conveyor here and put half of it into the garbage. If we now supply this electronic maker with the resources it needs, this will actually not work because of the way the items will get split uh, split up here. So, sorry. Oh man, this is, this always happens because I drink so much cola before I record a video, so I'm um, energized, I guess. It's my video recording drug. Anyway, uh, so um, the, the, the resource splitting or conveyor splitting will follow certain rules, and it's actually explained in the help menu over here, so let's take a look at that. I think it's in the pro tips. Yeah, there we go. Okay, so it's always clockwise. So if you have multiple conveyors coming out of a building, it will start with the most... Um, left on the top side of it and then we'll go clockwise so the first item goes out there second there so on and if you have uh, like a, a, a junction here the first one will go to the top as well if you have a top direction the second one will go to the right the third one will go to the left and the last one will go uh, no well the third one will go down and the like here well, um, and the fourth one will go to the left if you, if you happen to have those directions. So if you take a look here, um, the first one is going up into the garbage and the second one is going into the electronics maker. And as I said earlier, the electronics will come out first. So electronics, waste, electronics, waste, electronics, waste. So the first one will go to the waste and the, um, to the garbage and the waste will go to the electronics seller, which is not what you want. So you have to change this a little bit and it's probably the best way to just build it a little different like this, for example. 
Uh, now, the first one will go down and the second one will go to the left, so this setup would work. And this is uh, basically what I did here, if you take a closer look. The first one goes down, the second one goes left. So, the other important thing about conveyors is that a conveyor can only handle 10 items per 10 ticks, or one item per tick, to be more precise. So, this is not a big problem in the beginning of the game, but it gets more complicated when you upgrade your buildings or get more buildings, like more advanced buildings, which require a lot of different resources. Because if you try to get all the resources into the building it requires, you can clock up your um, your conveyors by just putting too many resources on it. So, for example, um, as I said, I played this for a few days already, so my buildings here are fairly highly upgraded. Which means, for example, the coal buyer... No, that's a bad example, let's go somewhere else. Um, Let's go here, why not? No, here, here's perfect, here's great. Okay, the coal buyer will uh, produce 24 coal every 10 ticks. Since every conveyor can only um, transport 10 items per 10 ticks, this means we need at least three conveyors going out of the coal buyer to actually get rid of all the coal it produces. So what we do is, we produce, uh, we take four conveyors and split them separately because we need uh, 12 coal for this plastic maker and 12 coal for this plastic maker. And then we have to split them up and uh, get them in uh, the plastic makers on separate inputs. Because again, if you put, would um, combine those two conveyors, they would get stuck again because then it's one conveyor belt again and it can only transport one item per tick. So yeah, that's not enough. And it's it gets complicated if you try to combine stuff. Like, if you take a look at here, I like I merged the oil line and the coal line, and it only works out because I did the math. And you can see that the oil, the oil seller has actually three outputs: two of them going here and one of them going here. And if I would remove this output, um, this would not work anymore because it changes the ratio or the amount of oil that is getting out of this output every ten ticks, which will then become too much and would clock up with the coal here and, well, would produce a problem, uh, create a problem. So, yeah, this is this is actually pretty important for the game, at least if you play it for a few days. Like, it's not important in the beginning because you will never have enough resources on one conveyor to actually get into that problem, but, um, yeah, later on you will. <laughs> so, it's important to know. Okay, now that we talked about making money, let's talk about research, shall we? Let's go to my other factory. The game um, has multiple factories, I didn't show you that yet. So in the beginning you only start with the first factory and you only have this part. You unlock multiple parts of the factory and then you can buy the Kilo factory which costs you one billion dollars. And this is basically an extra factory and later you can buy the Mega factory and the Giga factory if you want to. I can't afford those yet but um, well, we'll get there eventually. So if you take a look at the Kilo factory it starts with this part and then you can uh, unlock this one and this one and the next one to unlock would be B3 which is this one over here before B5. Okay, so what is why, why are the different factories? Well there's one or two important mechanics um, to that. The first one is that the upgrades, um, which I will show you um, Let's actually show them now, this makes more sense. Okay, uh, the upgrades, which allow you to upgrade your buildings, are actually separate for every factory. So, the upgrades I have here, or I bought here, will only apply to this factory. And if I go to the Kilo factory, I have to buy them again if I want to have them. So, what upgrades are there? Well, for the most buildings, they're like for, the, for all the buyers, makers and sellers, there is an, an upgrade which will just um, increase the ratio um, the building is consuming and producing resources and it has usually multiple level levels Most of them are kept at some point and they get more expensive the higher you get so you start with the iron buyer Iron buyer at zero if you take a look here the iron buyer is actually only producing one iron ore per 10 ticks So it's on level zero and if you upgrade it this will go up Let's just do it for the sake of exper uh, experimenting not experimenting uh, presentation there we go we, we upgraded a few times uh, now it's on level uh, f 5 and if you take a look at the iron ore buy it will actually produce 24 iron ore which is not very um, useful I guess I don't know if you need more iron later on for uh, other things probably I think yeah I, I think you need steel later actually for guns or tanks or something so you probably need that later again but right now I don't use iron because I'm building electronics and I don't need ir iron for that Anyway, that's how upgrading works, and we can sell those upgrades again. This time, however, we only refund 80% and not everything. So, yeah, you should be a little bit careful about your upgrades. Then, for the buildings that actually have a running cost, there is an upgrade which will reduce the running cost by a percentage. 
in most cases, those are not really worth it. Be careful about those. Like if you see one and you think, ah, oh, maybe um, I should reduce the cost of this building, do actually do the math. In most case it, cases, it will take you for ages to actually get the money back you paid for the upgrade. Um, this is mostly true because there was a patch recently which reduced the running costs of all buildings signific significantly. So the uh, running cost reduction upgrades are not very good right now for the most part. So yeah, be careful about those. Then there's an upgrade for the sellers which will increase the sale price. So this is usually worth it um, to do. But you should always be careful about upgrades in general and, and think about if you really want them because yeah for the sellers for the sellers the sale price um, thing can be good if you're actually producing a lot of this but don't put it too high because like they get really really expensive really quickly so yeah be careful about that and in general as I said be careful about upgrades because upgrades will mess with your ratios so if you have a build uh, a working factory layout build a uh, build in your factory and it's running and producing good money and you buy a random upgrade it would probably break because the ratio has changed and yeah everything goes to hell uh, sometimes it can be worth to buy multiple upgrades at once because it will keep the ratios especially in the beginning like if you have an iron buyer if you if you're building steel for example i think you can buy like multiple upgrades to um at once and this will actually not change your ratios which can be good but later on that's not true anymore because all of a sudden your buildings are producing so many resources that they do not fit on one conveyor anymore and yeah you get into trouble so that's about um most of the buildings that's the upgrades you get then the garbage you can upgrade the garbage so it wastes more items every 10 ticks basically and then we can upgrade research, but let's talk about research first. So this is my research build. It produces a good amount of research ticks, uh, research points per tick, which is good uh, because you need research to re research stuff. So how do you get research points? Well, by building research um, centers. Let's actually load the other save file again because we have space there. Um, let's do that. So we, we note this, go here. And I didn't save, so all I built earlier is gone, but this doesn't matter because this is not my current game anyway. So, we build a research center. Okay, cool. Research center. It costs $4.4 uh, $4 per tick, I think, because it's upgraded. If you don't upgrade it, it will actually cost $5 per tick. And it will produce one research point every 10 tick. This is not very efficient. One research point is not a lot. However, it says something about a production bonus for metal reports. What does this mean? Well, if we feed the research center with um, up to four metal reports every 10 ticks, it will actually increase its production by a factor of 2.2 per metal report. So if you don't get any metal reports in there, you get 4.4 per tick. If you get one metal report in there, you get 4.4 plus 4.4 times 2.2. And if you get four metal reports in there every 10 ticks, then you get 4.4 plus 4.4 times 2.2 times four research points every 10 ticks, which is way more efficient. So how do you get metal reports? Well, you build a metal lab, metal slab. And the metal slab will produce one metal report every 20 ticks. This is one of the few buildings that actually has a 20 tick, um, well, frequency, I guess. Uh, right now from the unlocked buildings here, it's the, the metal slab. The Research Center 2 and the Gas and Oil Lab, they have 20 ticks. All the others are working on 10 ticks ratios or frequencies. So this produces one metal report every 20 ticks and costs 8 bucks every tick. This is not very efficient either, but again, it has a production bonus for every iron, steel or alu you put in there. Alu is not unlocked yet, so I cannot demonstrate that, but I can demonstrate iron. So if I supply this thing with iron, but it will only consume one iron every 20 ticks, it will increase... Um, the metal report ratio by four, um, not the uh, ratio, but it will add four additional um, metal reports. So basically, every 20 ticks, this will produce one metal report. Then it will look if it has iron. If it has, it will consume one iron and produce another four red metal reports. And then it will check additionally if it has steel available and consume one steel to produce another six metal reports. So if you, cons uh, if you supply it with one iron and one steel every 20 ticks, you will get four plus six plus one. Um, 11 metal reports every 20 ticks which you can then can send to the research center which would actually oversupply the research center in this state so you probably don't want to do that but you could split it onto multiple research centers or you could upgrade the research center to take more reports and stuff like that so this is how this works so let's actually demonstrate it really quickly um, a little bit at least so there we go iron no, actually iron not iron ore right yeah okay um, so uh, iron foundry and iron buyer and we connect those there we go and now the metal lab will get iron and will produce way more metal reports all of a sudden and there we go bam 
multiple re meta reports going over there and now the research center will produce way more re uh, research points research points which is great okay so let's let's switch back to my other factory uh, god damn it not uh, the, to my other save game and check out the advanced research build over there so this is actually using research center center 2 um, which are the green ones, which are way more expensive, but they will produce more research points. Um, still a pretty bad ratio, but they get a production bonus uh, for gas and oil reports, which we get from gas and oil labs, which will gain a production bonus from gas, oil, plastic, and diesel, diesel and jet fuel. I don't have diesel and jet fuel yet, but I have gas, oil, and plastic. So I supply those, as you can see here, I supply every of my gas and oil labs with one um, plastic, one gas, and one oil every 20 ticks, and it will... Um, supply one research center with two gas and oil labs because um, if you do the math really quickly so what what is this producing well it produces one by default two per gas three per oil is six plus ten for plastic this makes 16 and i upgraded my research center so it can actually stock 32 gas and oil reports so it will consume 32 gas and oil reports at every 20 ticks so we need two gas and oil labs to supply it to 100 percent and now this is running at perfect efficiency however it will always say efficiency 100% even if we cut those uh, conveyor lines because the, effic the efficiency of the research center is actually calculated like it's not calculated on the maximum possible it will just it, it's always 100% because it can always produce the four research points it's supposed to um, which is a little um, weird because yeah that's not useful information I think that's a big point that could be improved in this game oh, what's wrong with my nose it's tickling god damn it anyway so this build is uh, pretty cool it produces a lot of research points it's probably not very efficient like you could probably fit more stuff in here if you set it up more clever than I did because there's a lot of wasted space here but I'm still pretty proud of it because it's well it produces a lot of research points so that's great um, okay cool Let's take a look what we can do with the research points. So research. Research is pretty basic. You don't research like there's not nothing complicated here. You start by just getting some um, basic things. You actually, the first few researches, you unlock them with money and all the later ones will be unlocked with the research points. So in the beginning, you, res you unlock the research center with money, for example, and you can build a research center so you can produce research points, um, which you will then uh, use to, well, research metals lab um, plastic components sorter i didn't explain the sorter yet right the sort is not very useful it's, it's used to sort resources on a conveyor but uh it only has a throughput of um 10 items per 10 ticks uh, which makes it pretty bad actually in most cases so yeah i did never use it um in a good situation like it was not never useful to me let's put it that way and basically you unlock more technologies you go down the line plastic electronics the next one is gun components when i unlock that one i will i think the next one is engines i'm not quite sure though and stuff like that so you put, uh, unlock stuff then there is the research clean plastic production which got rid of the waste the plastic makers produce i i think there will be clean electronics production later on as well um but yeah you get them way later so you have to deal with the with the waste for quite some time and then there's a chronometer upgrade, which actually has multiple levels, tend to be more precise. And the chronometer will add one tick per second. I, I mentioned earlier, at the beginning of the game, you have four ticks per second. And if you upgrade it, you well, this will speed up. And this means you pass more ticks in the same amount of time. So you make more money over time, which is good, right? But those upgrades or those researches get really expensive really quickly. So yeah, I only could afford four so far. Mm, uh, I think we covered most of it. Okay. Um let's just be complete here and uh talk about achievements those are pretty boring actually there could be more interesting achievements the first one just unlock um the other parts of the game research and upgrades and extras and then you over only have those like get one thousand bucks get 10 million bucks and you get money for it so my next goal is to get one billions at the same time and we'll get 25 billion so the achievements are pretty boring they could be more interesting i, th I think and yeah they're pretty pointless so that's achievements then we have extras extras is basically um the the, the uh, business model of the game so here you can buy some boosters and stuff like that which will allow you to well play the game faster you don't really have to though like the game plays at a pretty good pace even without those but yeah you can speed up things if you want to support a developer and um, you can buy a chrono booster for 20 bucks which will 
put you in play, uh, will give you plus eight extra ticks per second. So I would have be at sixteen. So this would actually double my production right now. Or you could uh, triple your research point production, which is pretty good as well. Or you can just, if you want to be cheaper, like buy a ticket or something. And a ticket is basically you can. It is a time travel tab. It allows you to skip three hours of production. Not skip, but gain three hours of worth of production. So if I would use my ticket, I have, um, I would gain seven point five five billions of money and uh, 23 millions of research points. And so, um, yeah, that's, that's the pay to win aspect of the game, I guess. Uh, not really, but <laughs> you get the idea. And also you can buy bonus ticks, bonus ticks over here. This is basically, um, the way, like if you close the game, it will not actually continue running. So you have to keep it open to keep it running. However, while you're away, you will, um, generate a few bonus ticks. Those are capped though. Um, I think you will only produce, uh, produce bonus ticks for two hours. So if you're away for two hours, you will have bonus takes worth of two hours and you can use them by speeding up time. There we go. And this will consume the bonus takes and put up the ticks per second ratio until the bonus takes are all consumed and this will speed up everything. So you can do that. Um, but as I said, it will only store up to two hours. You can actually, like if you come back after two hours, you will have like, what's two hours? I think 70, uh, 57,000 or something. And then, well, for me anyway, with eight ticks per second. And then you can actually come back and then go offline again, and it will add up to those and will put another two hours on top of it. I'm not sure if it's uh, capped, like if there's a maximum cap, there might be. Anyway, this is the mechanic of the game to like allow you to continue idling while you're actually offline. <laughs> so um, yeah, and last but not least, let's take a really quick look at the settings menu. Um, it's mainly, mainly used to, to um, well, uh, manage your save file. So over here, I will block this out in the video because this is my user key. It's used to, well, it's basically your pass user pass and award combination. So when you start a game, it will generate one for you. You can copy it and go to a different browser or to a different computer and put it in there and it will load the same game from the server. So that's your way of A, um, sharing your games on different platform or B, recovering it if you deleted your, your cookies or whatever. So um, that's that. And then you have three different save slots and you can save games in those if you want to. This can be useful if you're experimenting. Exp for example, if you're like, you got some upgrades or research new technology. Uh, before you completely wipe out your old layout, press the save button just in case you want to roll back. <laughs> um, yeah, that's usually, usually a good idea to do. And uh, well, that's it. You can reset the game if you want to, but yeah. <laughs> um, you have been warned. <laughs> Don't do that. Everything will be deleted. So, okay. Um, everything else, anything else? Uh, the help menu, yeah, the help menu is actually pretty good. Um, it's not spoiling you, like it's not like hand holding, but explains you the basics if you get um, get through it um, along the way while you unlock the new buildings and will well give you some insight. And it has a change log in here as well. And that's basically everything. Oh yeah, you can pause the game and clear the tracks, which can be useful to restart your build. If you're experimenting with the layout and stuff, this is really useful. And you can pause. Uh, pausing A for building, like for building your layout is good um, because then resources don't get in the way. And B, it's good if you, for example, um, right now, this is a good example actually where we are. This is my research build. It produces research points as you can see over here, um, but it will cost me money at the same time because all those buildings consume, um, have running costs. But um, yeah. So if I don't need more research points right now, I don't want to completely wipe out the layout and build a money layout here though. I can just pause it and the other factory will continue running. So I make money in this factory while this one is paused. That's so the, that's actually pretty useful. And uh, yeah, I, I just realized I forgot to talk about the upgrades of the research center. Upgrades, not research. There we go. So there are two upgrades to it. Um, one will increase the effectiveness of the paper bonus, which is just pretty good because it increases your research point output. And the other one is the, is increasing the max stock size for paper bonus. So this is not only, well, the research center will consume all the papers um, available at every 20 seconds, uh, every 20 ticks or 10 ticks, depending on the research center. And so increasing the stock size will allow, like how, will um, change how many it can actually consume every 20 ticks. So this will, is actually a pretty good and important upgrade if you want to get a big um, research point production. So as I said, I upgraded this quite a lot here. That's why my research centers can stock up to 32 reports per center, um, which makes them pretty, well, gives them a pretty good 
research point output. Anyway, so now I think I covered everything. <laughs> um, oh yeah, you can see, uh, I didn't explain it, but you can see if you unlock multiple parts, you can build conveyors between those factory parts. You cannot build outside, like I cannot put buildings here, but I can, can connect them with conveyors. Not everywhere, I cannot build a conveyor from here to here for some reason, but at some, like, in, in some openings you can do. Um, that can be useful to optimize your builds, as you can see here or um, over here, where I did it quite a bit as well. Okay, now we will wrap up the video. It's pretty long already, I believe. Yeah, 35 minutes. So, <laughs> I really should. Um, I think this game is amazing. But be careful, be warned, this will consume a lot of time. This is not your average idle game where you just buy a few upgrades every few hours and then just keep it running. If you want to play this properly, especially for the first few days, you have to build a lot of stuff and change layouts and upgrade stuff and rebuild everything quite a bit and this will this is pretty time consuming especially if you're like like if you have this this desire to optimize stuff and get the perfect layouts um this can take a lot of time so be warned be warned um only play this game if you have not enough space time for it or the discipline to not waste all your time on the game <laughs> if you have other things to do so yeah be warned also um, important to mention, there is a pretty active subreddit community for it. Um, it's slash r slash factory idle game. And uh, it's pretty interesting there. There are a bunch of interesting builds shared and stuff like that. And um, a lot of questions can be um, answered there if you have any questions about the mechanics or don't understand why one of your layouts doesn't work the way you would expect it to. And also there is a efficiency build thread where they share the best um, layouts for production actually this build oh not this one what <laughs> what am i doing this build is actually in that list right now um not because it's super great just because no one else um will care to share a build with those upgrade levels so yeah <laughs> i was just the first one to build one i guess well not to build one but to share it to build one and share it so um yeah um this can be interesting like i would it depends on how you want to play the game um, I don't check that thread before I build something. So let's say I have I unlock a new technology. I just build it, and then afterwards um, I check the efficiency build thread to check how good is my layout actually, like in comparison to the super optimal layout someone else came up with. Um, if you if you don't care about the building itself, you can obviously just check it out and copy the builds from there. They are not like it's not like it's not a complete list though. Like you will not find every perfect layout for every combination of upgrades and stuff in there so yeah you have to probably think you on your own anyway so it's pretty cool it's called factory idle it's available at factoryidle.com the link is in the description below it will also uh, link to subreddit below so check that out, out if you're interested i really like it um yeah oh uh, one important thing <laughs> i always came up with new things don't i one more important thing though uh this is actually really important if you don't buy anything for the game, so if you play it completely for free, the screen will actually be much smaller. It will be, I think, like this. And there will be ads over here and here. And you have to scroll the map um, to actually see all areas on the map. Um, but as soon as you buy something in the store, it will... Uh, anyway, uh, anything. So you can buy the ticket for three bucks, for example, which I did. It will remove all the ads and give you full screen all the time. So this is pretty comfortable. <laughs> there are also some um, some scripts to be found uh, for the browser, which you can use to actually get put the game in full screen. Um, the developer didn't say anything about that yet, but obviously, if you want to support the developers, you should instead put three at least three bucks into his shop and just get the feature um, the way it is supposed to get. But um, yeah, they're pretty easy way to circumvent that. Anyway, let's wrap it up, finally, shall we? <laughs> it's called Factory Idol. I really, really like it. Link is in the description below. I am TH Pine. Thanks a lot for watching. Have fun. And if you liked the video, consider subscribing. As I said, have fun and see you next time.